the first of the five C for a glove is construction. And what we refer to when we mean the construction is how the glove is dipped, what type of former it's dipped on, and then what is the substrate material. Uh, clean room gloves started with PVC in the 80s, and then in the 90s, the glove substrate of choice was latex, and now most recently, the most common material is nitrile. So when we look at construction, the three substrate materials are PVC, latex, and nitrile. Those are the three substrate materials. How is the glove dipped? If we look at the former upon closer inspection, we'll see that this former has an L on it, meaning that this is a size large glove. If you look at the textured fingertips, you can see that this glove is smooth in the palm, in the finger shaft, and then the fingertip has a texture to it. When the glove is dipped, the glove material will basically mimic the shape of the former. And then when the glove is done through the dipping process, it's stripped and reversed. So the inside of the glove basically becomes the outside of the glove. If you look at our nitro glove, you'll notice that the nitro glove is made from this type of former. By that I mean it has a smooth palm, smooth finger shaft, but textured fingertip. That's the construction for nitro. The construction for latex is basically a micro texture throughout the glove. And then the texture for a PVC glove is a former that's all smooth. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of PVC versus latex versus nitrile. When we think of a PVC glove, we think of what the glove comes from, which is a polyvinyl chloride derivative. PVC is a petrochemical derivative meaning that it's very stable. It's like plastic. Lot to lot to lot, a PVC glove is not going to vary. When a PVC glove is dipped, it's basically a clean process. And when the glove is stripped from the former, it is a clean glove. A PVC glove is dipped not using any powder in the process. So think of a PVC glove as a clean process. The PVC glove also doesn't go through a vulcanization period to case harden it. So as a result, the PVC glove from the molecular level is very porous. Remember how we spoke about cotton wipers and polycellulose wipers, how they tend to be open with their porosity, they tend to lint, but they also tend to be more absorbent because from a molecular standpoint, they're open structure. Think of the same thing with the PVC glove. It, it hasn't been vulcanized, so it's porous. Therefore, this glove is very bad around chemicals. Chemicals can and will seep through the glove. With certain chemical exposure, this glove will start to get warm, it will bubble up, operators will scream, they'll take the glove off and they'll go rinse their hand. So a PVC glove is clean, but it's really only clean in a dry process. If, you're, uh, if you have prolonged chemical exposure, particularly IPA, this glove is not going to have chemical compatibility. Um, but PVC glove being a petrochemical product is a fairly stable cost and it's going to be consistent lot to lot to lot. That's PVC. Why did the industry go away from PVC to latex? Well, as you saw, this PVC glove is not form fitting. So in the 90s, people went to latex. And the primary advantage of latex is it fits like a surgeon's glove. Because still, many surgeons prefer latex because it has very good tensile strength, it has very good elasticity, and it's very form-fitting. So this is latex. The downside with latex is latex basically, like maple syrup, comes from tree sap. Latex comes from the tree sap from a rubber tree. And so the quality of this latex, batch to batch, is a function of the age of the tree, the amount of rainfall, the fertilizer. There's a whole host of influencers that are going to influence whether this glove is clean. And then in addition to that, PVC is very stable indefinitely. Nitrile is very stable indefinitely. By stable, I mean it has a long, long shelf life. If you put a latex glove under an ultraviolet light or a fluorescent light and you go back to that glove two or three months later, you're going to find that the glove is very discolored, but the fluorescent light has accelerated the aging and really degraded the performance efficiency of a latex glove. But again, the reason why people went from PVC 
to latex really wasn't comfort. It really wasn't cleanliness. It was chemical compatibility and the comfort, right? Because you get much more form-fitting comfort with latex versus PVC. So then let's talk a little bit about nitro and why someone would consider nitro. So think of PVC as the glove that was introduced with the space race when President Kennedy said we're going to send a man on the moon. They were wearing PVC gloves, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Then in the late 80s, the industry started to migrate to latex. 90s and 2000 in the millennium, latex was the glove of choice. Well, now the glove of choice is nitro. And why nitro? Because when we look at the five C's, nitro offers comfort. It rivals the comfort of latex, and I'll illustrate with this glove right here. So you can see it's form-fitting. It conforms to the hand. So you have comfort rivals latex. You have cleanliness that exceeds latex. You have superior chemical compatibility. I didn't mention it with latex, but a latex glove is only good with acids. It's not good with solvents. A nitro glove is good with both solvents and acids. And so a nitro glove has full chemical compatibility. And finally, cost. The surprising thing is nitro early on was four times the price of latex. When nitro was first introduced, there was a four times price delta. About a year ago, there was parity between nitro and latex. Now, because of the global latex shortage and the fact that when the economy really crashed in 2008, they didn't plant rubber trees. It takes seven years from the time you plant a tree until a tree is full producing. That's contributing to a latex shortage. The uh, explosion of the car industry and the cosmetics industry in India and China is contributing to the latex shortage. So there's a global latex shortage, which means that even though from a cleanliness standpoint, latex is dirtier than nitro, the latex substrate material is more expensive than the nitro material. So now there are still people that are paying for latex. They're paying a premium for a glove that isn't as clean, doesn't have as much chemical compatibility, is comparable in terms of comfort, right? In construction, it's very similar. So the $64,000 question is why are there still people using latex? And that's the biggest challenge that we have is that people get complacent, they just get stuck. Because a lot of people looked at nitro gloves 10 years ago, when the case of nitro gloves was $400, and a case of latex was 100, and they said, wow, I really like the nitro. It, it's cleaner than my latex. It has better chemical compatibility. It's about as comfortable, but the cost, I can't justify the cost. So there's a huge opportunity to re-educate people, to make them aware that, hey, now you can buy a cleaner glove for a lower price. So, the industry started with PVC, 60s, 70s, and 80s. In the 90s and then the millennium, it went to latex. Ultra clean facilities did go to nitro eight, nine, ten years ago. But now, in the 2010s, most facilities can and should migrate to nitro. It's cleaner than latex and lower cost. Thank you.